everyone. What's up? It's Chelsea Van Buskirk with the Heart AF Podcast. Hope you guys are doing well today. I'm filming this on Dia de los Muertos. So it's a very exciting holiday, which actually falls right in line with what I wanted to talk about on this week's podcast. So I'm going to get a little woo-woo with you. <laughs> so if you're uncomfortable with that, I'm sorry. This is who I am. And I feel like I l- let myself out of that woo-woo closet a little bit with last week's episode. So this is that disclaimer that things are going to get on that spiritual level and it might feel a little woo-woo to a lot of people. I feel like that's the word that a lot of people use is that it feels a little witchy. I don't know. It's a little funny to me because I know that there is like judgment, I guess it is, or like an assumption that those of us who are on that woo-woo level or have this openness to spirituality and communicating with our higher selves, commuting with those that have passed on with spirit guides, angels, and this whole mediumship, psychic stuff, tarot readings, oracle card readings. I know that some people tend to judge that as evil or something antichrist-like, and it really isn't. People that typically are on that awareness of spirituality and connecting with higher energies and things it's all love-based. It's all from our creator and our own divinity. It's something that every person has. So it just, it makes me laugh when I do sometimes hear or feel those judgments. So I guess a part of me, like the self-conscious part of me wants to just acknowledge it because it makes me feel better just to call out what I'm afraid of, which is I'm afraid of being judged or people thinking that what I'm talking about is evil, summoning spirits, that kind of thing, because that's not what it's about. It's about this universal life force energy that most of us know as God or our creator. It's that higher power, this one universal higher power, this creator energy that has created you and me, it's created everything that we have in our world. And that that's love. God is love. And so there's nothing that is evil or malice with that. I just think it's something that gets twisted. I think it's something that's misunderstood. So people just use their fear and misunderstandings to make judgments about it. So I really did not want to talk about that. That kind of was a ramble. Really, so I'm trying to say is that I talk about things that might be considered woo-woo and it might not be your jam. It might not be something that you're remotely interested in and that's okay because then I'm not for you and that's totally fine. But I'm for people who have an openness, who might have a curiosity or who are open to maybe learning new ways of thinking or are open to broadening their awareness of what's possible and what could be out there. Because it is very magical, in my opinion. It's where miracles are created. I mean, it always makes me laugh that people will be so accepting of all these miraculous stories from the Bible, but when it happens in the here and now where we have actual miracles happening in front of our eyes, people are so quick to deny it or be afraid of it or think it's something else. So let's come back to what I want to talk about, which is this beautiful holiday and really Halloween, Dia de los Muertos. It's all part of this season that is steeped really rich in cultural rituals. And I think it's a Celtic, it's called Samhain is how it's pronounced, but it was a festival of the dead. So very similar to Dia de los Muertos. And it's where we picked up Halloween, All Hallows Eve from. It's it's all connected to these rituals. And really the date marks this in between the fall equinox and the winter solstice. It's also a time where it's said to be the veil or the space that separates earth or our physical beings with the spiritual realm. So it's supposed to be a thinning of the veil where it makes it easier to connect with loved ones that are in the spiritual plane or connecting with our higher selves or connecting with our guides and angels. It's supposed to be a very amazing time for healing, great for meditation, great for connecting with our loved ones. And I think that's what's so special and what I really wanted to address here today was talking about signs that we can get from our loved ones who have passed, how we can ask for signs, how to receive them, and how to know if that's really our loved one that's sending us a sign. Because our logical brain a lot of times wants to deny what might be a miraculous message that we're receiving. 
I asked in my women's group recently if anybody sees or is aware of any repeating numbers that they see often. So for me, I see a lot of numbers in threes, 111, 222, 333, 444, like I see them all and they all have different meanings. The triple numbers are like my go-to where I know I'm receiving a message. I take it as a message from my spirit guide team, angels, people that are trying to direct me or let me know like, hey, we're here, we've got you. There's actually a book, actually I have it on my desk right here. Kyle Gray is a great spiritual teacher. He's got a lot of great books. One of my favorites is How to Raise Your Vibe, which is funny because I have a Raise Your Vibe playlist that you can get on my website because music is one way to raise your vibe. But Kyle Gray has a great book on, I think it's like 101 ways to raise your vibe or something, but it's almost like a daily ritual book. His other book is Light Warrior. I really love that book. It's for those who feel like they want to do this kind of work that I'm doing or feel like they have a message to help enlighten people or empower people and basically spread the light. Anyway, the book I want to talk about that Kyle Gray did, he's an angel guide. He actually has an angel certification that I'm actually enrolled in, which is kind of exciting, but he has this book called Angel Numbers and it's a great text and I think resource to have when you do see repeating numbers because he goes in and lets you know what those messages are from our angels when you see numbers and he goes all the numbers like single digits to three digit zero to nine 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 he also goes into seeing things on the clock so he'll go to a couple different numbers that you may see so not only repeating numbers but sequential numbers like a one two three or twelve thirty four or if you see like one two two one like things that mirror each other so he just goes into that philosophy and how we can use numbers essentially to communicate or receive messages from higher entities and especially our angels because we do have a spirit guide team that works directly with us on our life path and is always there we just have to call on them they're always there they're not going to interfere with our lives without our permission so that's one thing you need to know about spirit and i think this is something i should say because I think people do get scared like oh if it's real that my loved ones that have passed like if they're trying to communicate with me are they watching me all the time are they watching me have sex are they watching me on the toilet like that seems intrusive and the answer is no they're not doing that okay spirit doesn't intrude in our life that way they can't approach us or do anything without our permission they're not watching you doing things that are private it's not like that you actually have to ask Okay, and you have to give permission. And the same thing goes if anybody gives you a reading, if you go to a psychic medium or a medium that is giving you some kind of reading, they should always ask for your permission to connect with your loved ones and getting that vocal assurance and you communicating clearly that yes, you're okay with them tapping into your energy and receiving messages for you. So permission's a big deal. So I was asking my group if they ever saw repeating numbers. My godmother had once told me when I shared a story of, seeing repeating numbers that she always called them God winks, you know, like a winky face. And I thought that was such a cute way to describe them because that is exactly what they are. They're little signs from spirit, whether it is from an angel or from God, like it is a sign for you to know that one, you're not alone. And two, like we are here for you. Like you are so held, like there are people in your corner who are supporting you through every phase of your life. If you're going through something that's painful, like you're not alone. And that's something I really like to stress. There is a whole realm of spiritual people that are there for you, that are there that you can call on on any time that can hold you, that can help heal you. And it's really just as simple as asking for that healing, asking for help, asking for direction, and then being open to receive those messages, to receive the signs that they are giving us and trying to communicate with us. So back to this season that we're in where historically is known as this thinning of the veil or a time period where it's easier to make those connections through physical and spiritual realms. So very special time. I I wanted to bring up the experience that I had. I definitely received a lot of signs yesterday and I was just really amazed and I did get emotional a couple times yesterday where my dad came through so strongly I was in a yoga class, which I think is very therapeutic anyway. Yoga can be a great way to also become connected because it's a place where you're connecting your breath and your body. So it's a soul, mind, body experience. And they had a special Halloween themed um, gentle flow class that I was at. And there was going to be a brunch afterwards, which is really fun. And anyway, the instructor had put together this lovely playlist and it was different from a normal yoga class because normally... The music that's played in a yoga class has no lyrics or words. It's just soothing music that you're doing the poses to. But this one was songs. And 
it was song after song that was like my dad. They were songs my dad listened to, and I just felt him. And it was super emotional. Like There was a time where I was like trying to hold back sobs a little bit because obviously it was in a public place. But at the same time, I also just closed my eyes and let it come, and I was trying to be quiet and wipe my face because I knew it was him sending me that message like, I'm here. I'm here, Chelsea. I'm here. And it's just nice to get that and know that that was, in fact, him giving me that message, that comfort, that validation, like, hey, hey, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm not physically here, but I'm still here. And I'm still a part of your life. Like we still have this connection. So it's just really beautiful. And then the other things that popped up yesterday was a ladybug showed up on my kitchen window, on the inside of my kitchen window, like just so crazy that it just appeared right there. And ladybugs are the sign I get from my grandma. I don't even remember how that became her sign, but it is when I see a ladybug, I just know that's her. And what's interesting is then even last night, my middle daughter shrieked because there was a bug in her hair and she freaked out. She thought it was a spider and it was a ladybug. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. And I always see ladybugs with her. And the thing is we call her lady, like her nickname is lady. And so we typically get my daughter ladybug things too. And so I just feel like that's kind of a special bond that her and my grandmother share, even though my grandmother never physically got to meet Layton. My grandmother died shortly after my oldest was born. So she never got to meet my middle daughter, Leighton, in the physical world. But the thing is, that's cool. If you don't know much about spirit and how things work, but if you birth a child and your loved one is passed before meeting the child physically, they get to meet that soul. They get to meet that child in the spirit realm. So before a soul attaches to the body, like for good, when you're born, a soul can go in and out. Like, let's say I was pregnant, like, cause this happened in a reading I had where my son Holton, now he's three, but when I was pregnant with him, my aunt was telling me about him and it's just so crazy. So the soul can essentially go back and forth, like in my physical body and still be connected with that spirit realm. And so my aunt got to tell me, she was giving me messages about what he was going to be like, his personality and things like that. And it's fun seeing all this stuff come to fruition that she had mentioned in this one reading I had where she came through and was like, I met him. He's so full of light and all these things and big energy, which he does. Anyway, it's really, I feel like comforting to know that, especially if you've had someone that you're close to that you're like, oh, I wish they could have met my son or daughter. They never got the chance. And even though physically get to physically see that interaction on this plane, they still got to have a chance to connect the soul level and, and they get to watch over and be involved in a different way. So I think that's something that could be comforting if you didn't know that. Um, so back to these signs, there is a great book if you're interested on learning like more in depth about signs from loved ones and spirit. It's by Laura Lynn Jackson. And I don't have the book physically with me, but I'll actually post links to these books in the description of this podcast. You can find it on YouTube as well. I always post my podcast videos to YouTube. So I'll be sharing some of these books I'm talking about so you can look them up and get them on audiobook or physical form. But that book by Laura Lynn Jackson is amazing. She is a world-renowned medium. And this book I thought was very well written and detailed and really just, I think, gives you so much comfort and a level of faith that your loved ones, when they pass on, how they are still with you and how they can still communicate with you. And it's very beautiful because a lot of times spirit will use things like numbers, like animals, insects, things like that. And it's amazing what they can do. I'm always amazed at sometimes where I see the sequence numbers. I was bringing it up before, like a lot of times I see them on license plates and it always just blows my mind because I drive multiple times a day. I'm a mom of three, so I'm going back and forth. I've got kids in three different schools right now. So a lot of different routes, driving, going to and from activity. And it's just so amazing when you see these license plates that have the sequence numbers and you just think like, how crazy that I see five different numbers in my one commute. I mean, it's not a coincidence. Like, it's really hard to say that's a coincidence when you see different numbers. So I'll look over and I'll be like a 333 and then I'll see an 888, you know, or something. And it's just so crazy. A lot of times I'll come back to this angel number book and look that up to see what that little message might be for me. And it's really interesting to see how you can get some things validated or things that might be on your mind that you're worried about, like you're getting some kind of encouraging message from spirit. And it just lets you know that, hey, you don't have to handle life on your own. You actually have a whole team that's here to support you, cheer you on, 
and give you support and guidance that you can call upon. So I know that could be a question is how do I ask a loved one for a sign? I think one of the best ways to do it is you ask for something specific and you can do this in a prayer form. You can write it down in a journal, but essentially you're doing it with your head, right? Or you can write it out too, but you just ask like, Hey dad, can you please give me a sign? I would love to see whatever it is. So it could be something like, I want to see a dragonfly. Let me use my dad's example. So let's say I ask my dad, I want a dragonfly. And I will give him, let's say, send me a dragonfly by two days from now. So get, make it specific so you can know for sure that this is validated science. So you can say, I'm just going to do this right now. Dad, please send me a dragonfly by Thursday at 6 p.m. Okay. So I gave a timeline. I know that by this week, Thursday, 6 p.m., I'm asking my dad to send me a dragonfly just to let me know that you're with me and that you know how much I love and miss you. Okay. So that's it. You just ask for the sign, give it a timeline, a deadline. So that way, you know, and you can be validated that that in fact was a sign. The next thing you need to do is be open. You need to be open to receiving that sign. Okay. And also know that it might not come in the form or context you might think. So I asked my dad for a dragonfly. Could it be a dragonfly that flies around? Could be. It could be a sticker of a dragonfly that is on something that I see. Like it could be a window decal that's a dragonfly that I see. It could be driving and a car cuts in front of me and there's a dragonfly on their window. It could be a kid getting into my path and on their backpack is a dragonfly. Like it could be any number of things that has a dragonfly in it. Or I could just be minding my own business and somebody says the word dragonfly or I hear it on the radio. They're saying something about a dragonfly. It could be any one of those things. I think... This might be an example from that one book, but somebody asked for a butterfly and they were eating family dinner. The mom was getting the salad ready and the daughter said, mom, there's a butterfly in the salad. And she looked and it wasn't a butterfly, but it was like a piece of purple cabbage or something that was shaped and it looked like a butterfly. So the daughter said butterfly and that was her sign, right? Because she had asked for a butterfly. So you really have to keep that open mind. And then the other thing is having faith and accepting the sign that you receive. Okay, because it's so hard to dismiss it or try to rationalize it away and explain it away. But really, spirit is miraculous. They create miracles all the time. And so it's really having that faith that, oh my gosh, this is my sign. This is my loved one speaking to me. And then saying thank you, having that gratitude, it makes spirit so happy. And so when you acknowledge the sign you're given, and you take the time to say thank you and express your gratitude, then they're going to give you more signs. So anytime I'm driving and I see those signs, I always say thank you. It's just so magical. Or sometimes when I'm stargazing, I love seeing shooting stars. I think that's so magical. So sometimes I'll like just ask for one, like, please, will you send me a shooting star, please? And when it comes, I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you. You know, I always say thank you because it's just so nice. And again, the more you express that gratitude, the more you'll receive it. It strengthens that connection and encourages that energy exchange, right? Of you give and you get. So it's this, that infinity symbol, right? Like where you're getting getting it back. Like it's just like this connection and it's beautiful. And so the more you say thank you and you acknowledge, the more signs you'll receive. It's kind of a fun game that you can play, I guess you could say, just to experiment with receiving signs or just the more you are open to receiving them and the more you start to receive them. And again, saying thank you goes a long way. There's actually another book if you're interested in testing out energy and spirit and how the magic of energy works and how you can really test things and see the magic before your eyes, so to speak. There is a book by Pam Grout called E Squared, and it's a great book, especially for people who are just getting into metaphysics and learning about energy and learning about our way to co-create with the universal life force energy, that kind of thing. It's a great book that basically gives you all these little exercises. Each chapter is an exercise and it gives you a guide of how to perform the exercise and how you can prove how energy works. And it's amazing. It's so amazing how that law of attraction works, how we have this ability to co-create and make things happen in our lives. Miracles are real. I actually was listening to an audiobook earlier this week and it's something I've heard before. A president has this quote too. I can't remember which one, but in the book, it was Wayne Dyer. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> He's amazing. And he said, you know, whether you believe it's possible or impossible, you're right. I think the quote from Lincoln, I don't know. I'll probably have to Google it and look at it later. But whether you believe you can or can't, you're right. Like your belief 
and that openness to receive means everything. So if you are dead set, your mindset is, no, that's not real. I can't receive signs. Then you're right. But if you open your mind and open your awareness and are open to receiving them, they will come your way. They come. And it's so amazing. It's so beautiful. And like I said, it's just, I think, very comforting to know that your loved one is still with you after they pass. Grief is one of the most painful things you'll go through in your life. It's super painful and it's life changing and having a little bit of comfort and having some communication pathways for you to connect with your loved one, I think is super empowering and comforting. And that's actually what brought me to the woo-woo stuff was processing my grief and having unfinished business with my mother. I expressed that on an earlier episode. Grief is what led me down this path of energy healing and learning about our souls and soul journeys. And there's so much more to elaborate and talk about as I continue on this weekly podcast. So I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for being here with me today and listening. I would love to hear feedback if you did ask for a sign from someone and what happened. Tell me, let me know what sign you asked for. How did you receive the sign? I'd love to hear how that worked out for you. It's amazing when it happens and love goes out to all of you. I hope you guys have a very magical week. And again, this is the perfect time to request those signs from your loved ones while the veil is thin. Write a note to your loved ones. It's a great way to just express your gratitude or anything you want to say to a loved one. This is a great time for meditation and healing right now. You can always ask for help. Like you have a spirit team that is willing and ready and just standing by as easy as before you go to bed. Like, please help me with whatever. Like I need help healing. Like I am calling on you. So whether you do that in a prayer, meditation, say it before you go to bed, before you close your eyes, write it in a journal. It's a great time to make that connection with the higher energies right now. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram at Chelsea.VanBuskirk or find me on my website at ChelseaVanBuskirk.com where you can download Load my high vibe playlist. I will have descriptions and links to the books and authors I talked about on this podcast. So look out for those as well, just in case you are interested. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.